Hi everyone, this is Kurt James and I'm here with Max Munoz from the National Butterfly Center here in Mission, Texas. We've uh, learned a lot of things today just in the half hour, hour we've been here, uh, but we would love to learn a little bit more about Max and what you do here at the Butterfly Center. Well, I'm the, the director of operations and mainly my job is making sure that the grounds are uh, safe for visitors and uh, that the gardens keep going so we can keep bringing butterflies in. Okay. so. The Butterfly Center is really designed as an educational tool to educate people about butterflies and some of the, the natural things that, that go on here in the Rio Grande Valley, a lot of the wildlife that, that happen here. So what exactly attracts the butterflies to this area? Well, uh, butterflies are attracted to the native plants that uh, actually belong here. So what we try to do is we put the plants out there for them. We put uh, host plants and we put nectar sources for them. And uh, we try to touch as much as we can on native, but we do have a couple that are not. And uh, you would have to come in to see it yourself to see exactly what we're talking about. But uh, these are all gardens and um, we have uh, anything from trees to grasses that attract butterflies. Okay. And we've seen quite a few butterflies today and there are a lot of butterfly species that come down here. How many different species of butterfly? Uh, in the valley itself, it's, it's over 340 species. Now, the whole U.S. has about 600 species. Okay. But uh, here in the valley, we see um, almost as more than uh, 300 species. And uh, every year is different, depending on the weather of the whole year. To know exactly what we'll see, we don't know unless you can predict uh, the weather. Okay. So they migrate, but of the 600, we get 340 or so. Uh, so there are actually cold weather butterflies and yes, warm absolutely. weather butterflies. There's uh there's different types of butterflies that just won't make it all the way down here, and they'll hunker down somewhere up north. Okay. Uh, it'd be probably too weather for I mean too too warm for them down here. Okay, too warm. Yeah, we we don't have experiences <laughs> like that down here in the Rio Grande Valley. Well, it's really interesting. So in addition to the the plants that that attract uh is and the the weather. Uh, why do they stick around? I mean, do they stick around just for the, the, the feeding? Or is that their, their main goal? Well, just like, uh, like hummingbirds. Hummingbirds, um, they get their energy out of uh, sugar water or nectar from different plants. The, the butterfly is the same thing. Um, the butterfly tends to recognize where exactly it fed last year. So if you keep your garden with a uh, nectar source for them, they will come back every year. So um, this place being here over 17 years, Having uh, the nectar source for them allows them to come every year and stop here okay. as a sort of a, a way station for them, okay. you know, to feed off of if they're migrating. But the ones that don't migrate, they know that they can stay here year round. So we have butterflies year round. So we got here a little early. Uh, when we got here, all of the, the butterflies seemed to be just kind of hanging. And what exactly were they doing when they were just kind of hanging out there? Well, all butterflies um, on their wings, they're composed of, uh, of uh, scales. So throughout the night or in the morning uh, dew, the, the moisture gets into the scales and they won't be able to fly because it makes them a little heavy. So the first thing they do is they open the wings up. That's what they call basking. They bask in the sun and once they're dry, they're able to, to fly off. I, I tend to call them that they're, that, to say that they're solar powered. Okay. Because once they get the sun, then they get the energy to be able to fly. The original solar powered energy. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> that's awesome. So tell us a little bit about the National Butterfly Center. How long has it been here? Uh, we've been here for over 17 years. It is a nonprofit organization, and um, our income is based out of admissions and donations and grants to be able to produce these areas or um, these conservation areas for all types of uh, critters. So the center has been here 17 years. The building itself has been here about seven years, uh, which is a really nice uh, a building. It has sort of a museum inside and a lot of information. It is called the Chrysalis Building because when you arrive, you're coming in as a caterpillar. Okay. You're walking right in front of host plants. Okay. You go into the building, which is your chrysalis, where you find out as much information as you can about butterflies. Okay. And then you hatch out the back as a butterfly into the garden. Wow, that's, so that's, really interesting. that's interesting the way it was designed. Exactly. Now, Max has an interesting story. Max was uh, here, he's been here for about the last 12 years, but began as a volunteer. Can you tell us your story a little bit? Um, I was, uh, I went to school to become an accountant because my father was a farmer and he said, I don't want to ever see you in the sun working out in the sun. So he said, get a, a good education where you can be in an office. So I became an accountant. And uh, over the years, I became obese. I was over 300 pounds. I became a diabetic, high blood pressure, and I hated people. <laughs> and um, 
so my wife one day after I got married, my wife said, "You need to change your your way the way you live." She said, "Go take a walk and breathe some fresh air." So I walked over here from my house, and when I arrived, I saw that the ladies that were running the place needed some help. So I volunteered and I helped them mow the area, and then I helped them pull the weeds, and then they said, "Why don't you come tomorrow?" So I came the next day and so on, and I ended up staying here. So oh now I've been God. here about twelve years. And what's your function here? Here, I'm the director of operations. I do uh, payroll. I control the gardens. I control the staff to make sure that everything is getting done and that we keep producing plants or gardens for the butterfly. Okay. And who actually owns the facility? Well, it's a nonprofit organization, but the, our founder is Dr. Jeffrey Glassberg. Uh, he is well known for his butterfly guides, and uh, he's the president of the North American Butterfly Association. Uh, this is a place that he had in his dreams because he he's a butterfly enthusiast so he didn't want to travel to mexico so he said let's go to the closest or the nearest point to mexico and create gardens and that's what this thing so prior to him really creating this this wasn't as much of a stopping point for the butterflies that there were true? some stopping points but not in uh the numbers that you see them here okay um there were some areas that are still wild or were wild back then not anymore and you would see a lot of your um like the Tawny Emperors and, and Queens, which are butterflies that are always here. Okay. But the migration will usually skip us. Okay. And now, having places like this, it's sort of a way station we get to see a lot more. So what is the most common butterfly you'll see when you come to the Butterfly Center? One of our, our favorites is the Queen Butterfly, which mimics the uh, Monarch. Or you could say that's a cousin of the Monarch. Okay. But we have tons of those everywhere. And besides Tawny Emperors and others, the Queen is the one that is very noticeable and everybody here sees them. Okay. So with just about any any enthusiast that, that is, whether they're birding or butterflying, uh, what's that one butterfly that has been here that you're still just dying for to return? There's so many. To, to name them all, I would, we would need a lot more time. <laughs> um, but um, I do know that there was a time when uh, we saw what we call the tail cecropian. So I called Dr. Jeffrey Glassberg, who's well known for this, and, and I said, Dr. Glassberg, I just saw a tail cecropian, and he said, you know what? I've seen him before because he travels all over the world looking for them. He says, call me when you see an Orion. Well, the next day the Orion's was here. Okay. And as soon as the Orion, uh, they got pictures of it, we had people from all over the place come in just to look for that. Okay. And it hasn't been since, the same since. In addition to the butterflies, we have other other animals out here. What yes. other animals um, do you see? The one thing you'll see a lot is birds. We have so many different types of birds out here, uh, from green jays to uh, kiskadees, cardinals, uh, ultimate Orioles. We have a lot of really good birds. And um, every once in a while, you'll be able to see a bobcat, a javelina, a coyote, possums, raccoons, you name it. They're all out there. And it's all wild. There's no conservation of them and no one really pushes them no, out. No, no, no. Nobody pushes them out. Uh, we see them everywhere, including the snakes. We have indigo snakes. And the indigo snakes are good because they end up eating all the other snakes. So, okay. you know. And I, I obviously, something that's a nonprofit that is funded through donations and grants. What's the one thing that we can do as a public to help you? The word of mouth is the main thing that we would like to see out there more is letting people know that we're here. Letting people know that it's safe to be here and understanding that we need this. And if you're gonna create your own garden at home, you can always come here and ask, you know, uh, what are you doing to be able to produce this? And also what you need to plant at your home. I mean, it could be, the home can be anywhere in the U.S. and we'll have recommendations for anywhere you go. Um, we can educate you on host plants and nectar sources for that to be able to create these gardens to help the environment. Okay. Okay. And if you ever say, well, where am I going to find those plants? We have the plants ourselves. We sell the plants ourselves. You'll sell the plant. So you kind of get the starter kit going for them here. There you go. Okay. Great. That's awesome. So when my neighbor complains that my yard is full of weeds, I'll just say, no, that's my butterfly it's yard. It's selective weeding. It's selective there weeding, certainly, certainly. So tell me a little bit about when you can come visit the Butterfly Center. Well, the center is open every day uh, throughout the whole year. We never close unless there is a storm um, that could become dangerous because of the tree limbs. But other than that, we're always open. We're open eight to five every single day. And um, what we do is we allow you to just walk around, roam around freely. Uh, we have some uh, small guides for you to take with you to, to see everything. But if you were to hold a party of, of, let's say, 10 people and you come in at once, you can just come in and inform me and 
either myself or one of my staff members will walk with you. So you can have a guided tour exactly. if you wanted a guided tour, or you could just come out and enjoy the beauty enjoy of the, the center. Of it. yeah. It's a beautiful center out here, and uh, we certainly appreciate the work that you do. So I'd like to thank Max for spending some time with us today from the National Butterfly Center. If you want to get your butterfly garden going, come see Max. He'll give you all the details. He'll get you going. But we'd like to thank you because Welcome Home RGV wants to do their part to make the valley great. And uh, thank you just so much for sharing your story with us today. And we appreciate it. My pleasure.